Today, church, today is another Sunday to worship the Lord our God. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, We thank you for your goodness. Lord, we thank you for your mercy, Lord. We thank you for sustaining us, Lord, all throughout the week, God. Lord, we just want to remember your love, God, and your goodness into our lives, God. Lord, thank you so much for being so good to us, for providing all our needs, Lord, for protecting us from sickness, from harm every day, Lord. Salamat, Lord, for the strength, everyday strength, everyday grace, everyday favor from you, O God. And Lord, as we come to you in worship, God, we bow down before you, Lord. And Lord, if there's anything in our hearts that does not honor you, O God, we ask for forgiveness, Lord. We ask that you would cleanse us, O God, and purify us, O God. You said in your word, Lord, if my people, while called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, and I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Lord, we come before you this morning in worship, in adoration of your goodness and faithfulness in our lives. Lord, dwell in the midst of us, O God. 
We welcome you in this place. We welcome you in our homes, Lord. Lord, we welcome your presence, O God. And we surrender everything to you, every worries, God, every thing that hinders us from coming to you, Father. Lord, fix our eyes towards you, Jesus. Fix our hearts towards you today, Lord. We worship you, Father. We worship you. worship the Lord our God. Hallelujah. We come and we worship the Lord. Lord, we worship you, Father. We adore you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, we sing. Come, man. Now is the time to worship. Come. Now is the time As you are to worship, yes, Lord, come just as you are before your God. Come, we sing once again, come. Now is the time to worship, come. Now is the time. Is the time to give your heart, Amen? Come, just as you are, just as you are to worship. Yes, God. Come, just as you are before your. Together now. One day every time we'll confess you are God. Yes, Lord. One day every knee will bow. But still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come. Now is the time to worship. Let 
Lord, one day every tongue will confess that you are God. And one day, Lord, every knee will bow. Lord, we worship you, Father. And we choose you now, Father God. More than anything else, Lord, in this life, we choose Christ. We choose you, Lord God. Lord, we surrender everything to you, Lord. Help us to surrender everything to you, God. We pray. We pray, Lord. As we gather here, Lord, to worship you, to adore your holy and righteous name. May you be praised and you receive the thanksgiving, the worship of your people, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Let's worship the Lord, church. Yes, God. Yes, 
the waters cover the sea. See our hearts yes. and remove anything that is standing in the way, yes, Lord, of coming to you. from heaven yes God forgive our sins we pray and though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song we'll be singing forever
of joy, Lord, in your presence, O oh God. We need you in our lives, O oh Lord. Bring us back, Lord, the heart of worship, Lord. Bring us back, Lord, our first love, O oh God. Bring us back, Lord, the zealousness once again for you, God, a passion for your name, O oh Lord Jesus. Lord, bring us back, Lord, to intimacy with you, O oh God. We worship and we adore your holy, glorious name, O oh God. We celebrate what, what Christ has done on the cross for us. We give you glory, Lord Jesus, for the sacrifice. You gave your only son, Lord, for the glory of your name, because you love us, oh God. Thank you, Lord. We celebrate your great love, oh God, your great mercy, Lord, your compassion, Lord. It never ends, oh God. We offer you this song of praise, O oh Lord. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, amen. Firm to the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ. Stone, man, this solid ground, firm to the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter. alone who took on flesh fullness of God in hell blessed babe this gift of life and righteousness scorned by the ones he came to save till on that cross as Jesus died the rest was satisfied from every sin he was laid here in the death of Christ I live till on that cross as Jesus died the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin the ground his body lay light of the 
the world by darkness lain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. Amen. Sing. And as he stands in victory, since curses love. the precious blood of Christ and as he stands in victory since curses lost it's gripped on me for I am his and he is mine bought by the precious blood of Christ thank you in life no fear in death this is the power of Christ in me from life first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny no guilt in life no guilt in life amen no fear in death this is the power of Christ cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny no power of hell no scheme of man man can ever pluck me from his hands till he return or calls me home here in the power of Christ I live Oh, calls me home Here in the power of Christ I stand On oh, Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking sand solid ground in which we stand, O oh Lord. We anchor our faith in you, O oh Lord. And we give you glory, worship, and praise in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Blessed Sunday Church, this is Pastor Noel once again, BCI's Associate Pastor for Missions and Outreach. Now, before we start with our message, let me give some praise report first. Uh, during my, my visit to Daba Oriental last week, we have like seven couples. We did some marriage seminar for them. And they are actually living in together. And so we thank God because they decided to be in uh, the blessed matrimony. And we also, I also spoke uh, at, you know, with the 15 churches in, uh, in Katiel, uh, youth, youth gathering. And so uh, it's a victory. And they, they invited me once again to be there in other churches. And we, Went also to a very, you know, slippery road. It's uphill, downhill. But then the people in that place, it's four kilometers from the highway, but it's, it's, the, the road is so difficult. But then we thank God for the victory that we had there. Now, our message is about Jesus and division. Yes, it's Jesus and division. Our message is about Mission and conflict. We are looking at how these two themes of mission and conflict play out in Matthew chapter 10. As believers, we are called in missions from God and that when we go forth on mission, we can expect conflict. Expect conflict or persecution. Today, we want to look at a different type of conflict and this is the conflict of division. When you stand up for Christ, you can expect not only opposition, but you also expect division. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we come before your throne of grace and mercy. We ask for anointing of God from the Holy Spirit. We ask for wisdom. We ask for boldness to speak the truth, Lord. No agenda. Lord, we pray that your name be lifted up. And we pray for your word today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. When did division started? I believe it started before the creation. When Satan or Lucifer started to revolt against God. And so some of the angels fell together with Lucifer, who is now called Satan. Satan's fall from heaven is symbolical, described in Isaiah 14, verses 12 to 14, and Ezekiel 28, verses 12 to 18. While these two passages are referring specifically to the kings of Babylon and Tyre, they also refer to the spiritual power behind those kings, namely Satan. These passages describe why Satan fell, but they do not specifically say when the fall occurred. And so, during the creation, there was division also, the day and night. And God between Adam and Eve. Let's read Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 to 36. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. There are all sorts of dividing lines in life, things that cause people to fall on the other side or another. Take two, you know, sports fans of opposing teams, put them in a room together while the game is going on. And that particular dividing line will itself be clear very quickly. 
But there are dividing lines in life too. Example, politics. Right? There's, there's division. And music, especially with the age. I like this kind of music, but you know, the younger ones, they like, they like the, the Korean pops or, you know, other genre. And the clothing style also. There's always division, and that's according to generation also. There are all sorts of things that can cause division in our daily lives. Jesus sent his 12 disciples on a mission, but then he told them and gave them instructions for that mission. He told them to expect division and that division would take place around them. As you will see from today's passage, you will respond to Jesus affects everything else in your life. It will affect your relationship with people. It will affect how you respond to other believers. Most importantly, it will decide your eternal destiny. Jesus is the dividing line in life. He is the dividing line in heaven. He is the dividing line on earth. See, we will look at these two points today's passage. First, Jesus is the dividing line in heaven. Jesus said, Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. That's in Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 to 33. Here Jesus speaks of two groups of people, those who acknowledge Him and those who disowns Him. He speaks of two different groups with two different results and no exceptions. A. Acknowledge Jesus on earth and Jesus will acknowledge you in heaven. The first group of people are those who acknowledge Jesus, while the other one are those who disown Him. Jesus says that if you acknowledge Him, He will acknowledge you before His Father on earth. To acknowledge Jesus means to openly and publicly declare your faith in Christ and your loyalty in Him. Again, to acknowledge Jesus means to openly and publicly declare your faith in Christ and your loyalty in Him. When you say, I am with Jesus, then Jesus will also declare you before the Father and says, I am with Him or I am with her. Romans 1.16, as Apostle Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. It's one thing to believe in Jesus in your heart, but the Bible says we should publicly acknowledge Him with our mouths. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 to 10 says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, then you will be saved. You can't be saved without believing, but true faith will always result in speaking out. There's a big difference in believing, but then you're supposed to speak out your faith. There, there is no such thing as secret Christian or secret agent. Now, if you acknowledge Jesus before others on earth, Jesus will acknowledge you also before His Father in heaven. I have a friend in college, actually my classmate. Well, he, he used to tease girls, you know, uh, joke. And I realized that when we graduated college, after a few years, I realized that he's a pastor's kid. And actually, he's a pastor now. And I jokingly told him, I know that you were a Christian when, when, during the college, but you didn't tell me about Jesus. But he's a good, good guy to me. 
Yeah, he treats me for snack, free snacks with a canteen. And being water baptized also is one of the very, very best way to acknowledge Jesus before here on earth. You are making a primary confession before men. Okay? But then, you should also daily acknowledge Jesus before others in your life. And B, Jesus, if you disown Jesus on earth, Jesus disowns you in heaven. Disown Jesus on earth, Jesus disowns you in heaven. To, to disown Jesus is to reject Him as Lord and Savior. It is not to acknowledge Him publicly before others. For Jesus to disown those who disown Him is not being mean or petty. He is just confirming in heaven what you have already said on earth. So are you with Jesus or not? Jesus says, if you are truly with Him, you will speak up about Him. To disown Jesus is a very serious matter. Imagine being married to your husband or wife, and then you refuse to acknowledge Him as your husband or her, as your wife. There will be big trouble, right? Now, imagine being a Christian and not acknowledging Christ before others. You can't do it. You can't be, you can't be a Christian and not acknowledge Jesus. Christ is the dividing line in heaven. We read in Matthew 25 verses 31 to 33, When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people from the other from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on the left so there is a division which side will you be on that day or which side are you right now are you at the right side or the left side of Jesus Christ. Point number two, Jesus is the dividing line on earth. Jesus tells us He did not come to bring peace but on earth, but a sword. A sword that divides, and He warns us that He will even become a dividing line among the families. Jesus did not come to bring peace, but the sword. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 34, Jesus says, Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Sword here does not refer to violence, but division. And this becomes clear when you look at the parallel saying in Luke chapter 12, verse 51. Let's read. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. Again, do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. Why does Jesus use the image of a sword? Because a sword divides, it cuts things in two. That's the power of sword. Now the Jewish people expected that when the Messiah came, He would bring peace. For example, okay, one of the greatest messianic prophecies in, in the Old Testament is Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. It says here, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. 
That's why, uh, that's why in Luke chapter 2, we read that the night Jesus was born, angels appeared to the shepherds and proclaimed, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom His favor rests. So, which is it? Did Jesus come to bring peace or not? The answer is yes. Jesus will bring peace, but not right now, right away. There is a battle going on which Jesus wins in the end. And when the battle is over, there will be perfect peace. But in the meantime, in the present, in the middle or in the midst of conflict, there will be division. You are called on to be on mission for God. And the mission brings division itself before it brings peace. Jesus did not come to bring peace, but sword, division. B, Jesus will become a dividing line even among families. In Matthew chapter 10, verses 35 to 36, it says there, For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Wow. The word translated turn in verse 35 is a word that literally means to cut into two parts or to divide. So Jesus is saying that he has come to divide a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and so on. Jesus is quoting from Old Testament book of Micah where we read this. For a son dishonors his father, a mother rises up against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, a man's enemies are the members of his own household. And that's found in Micah chapter 7, verse 6. Jesus is the dividing line in heaven and dividing line on earth. Being neutral towards Jesus is not an option. You are either for Him or against Him. You might be able to sit on a fence, but not on a sword. So you have to choose. Are you going to choose one side or the other? Nowadays, we can see divisions, not only in the politics, in the government, in tribes. During wars, there's division, but also in churches. But one that's the scariest division is happening inside your household. A son against his father, a daughter against his mother, mother-in-law against her mother-in-law. But it says here that the man's enemy is found in his household. Where there are 13 siblings in our family, our eldest passed away already. So what do you expect if your father has left one hectare only and there's 12 people? Mostly the eldest will fight and the youngest would, would also fight against his right. Sometimes we fight on little things inside the church. I have a friend who, who, who's been asking me to be, uh, or I was doing the Bible study for like five years already. We don't talk on this thing, and we are friends. Okay? We talk about God, about the ministry, what we can do, but not on this thing that can divide friendship. How are you today? 
Is God dividing your friendship, your family? We are in a difficult times, but then the word of God should be fulfilled. Jesus is a dividing line in heaven. Jesus is a dividing line on earth. When you talk about Jesus to your friends, expect division. Expect persecution in your community. But the good thing, you are doing God's will. You are obeying His command. You are on a mission and you are supposed to expect division. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that you are the dividing line in heaven. You are the dividing line on earth. You ask us, Lord, that those who acknowledge you you will also acknowledge us before your Father in heaven. But he who disowns you, Lord, you will also disown us before your Father. In these last days, Father God, we ask for your grace and mercy. We ask for your help. Father God, help us to be united with our friends, with our family, with the church, Lord. Lord, we pray, we pray for mercy. Uphold every family, every church members of God. Help us to be united rather than divided. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. A blessed day, church. How are you this week? Is it victorious or not? Taking from Malachi 3, verse 10 to 12, the Word of God said, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the flood gates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your field will not cast their fruits, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nation will call you blessed, for yours will be delightful land, says the Lord. God gave a multi-pasted promise in Malachi. He said that if we bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, He will open the flood gates of heaven to pour out His abundant blessings. Tithing is releases the blessings for us and our families, not just provisions but also protection from things that would try to debar or snatch away from those blessings from us. Church, how has God blessed you for honoring Him in your tithe? Me, that's why I 
asked you a while ago, how is your week? Is it victorious or not? Me, it was really so amazing. Because uh, as we are faithful in our giving, God really amazes us. He blesses us so much that we could not contain it. I just want to share to you that uh, two weeks ago, our house was being closed due to some problems with our family. But lo and behold, God is so good. That's why I love this verse that said, Flood gates of heaven. When God closes the door, what I always remember is that He will open windows. But I'm so thankful when I know Pastor Dave Magalon that he is the one who mentored me about gates, not just windows. It's literally a gates, flood gates of blessing that when we should have to vacate our house where, which we build, which we really <laughs> have all the resources to build it, but for some reason or, or another, sad to say, we have to vacate. But thanks be to God, when we are faithful in our giving, God is so good. He opened gates to us. If you want to know about it, I can share it to you. Maybe sometime, I already share it to some of our brethren. But really, lo and behold, it's really a dig deep in my heart when God really said to me the word in First Peter 5, 5, God opposes the proud but give grace to those who are humble. We just silently vacate the place, but the place that He gave to us times three than the place that we have. It's really so amazing. God is really so good. That's why brethren, friends, churchmates, when we are faithful to God, He is so faithful to us that word that he said he will open the floodgates of heaven i can really say amen i can really attest to that how god is so good hallelujah thank god as you give you can send it to those account on your screen Let's pray. Abba Father, thank you so much for all the blessing that you gave to us that we could not contain and the protection of our lives. Indeed, you will always in control and always be our refuge, our fortress in times like this. To you, 
we give all the glory, honor, and praise. You alone deserve it. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Have a blessed week, everyone. Shalom. Let me pray a blessing for you, church. Let's pray. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. You also will do it. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And Amen. Welcome to our Children's School of Character. I'm Teacher Jen. Today, we will do an amazing science exploration. Are you excited? Because I am excited! Are you ready to explore? Great! Because for today's exploration, we will need a drinking glass with half full of water, a drinking straw, scissors, paper towels, and food coloring. Before we begin, let's read our Bible verse for today. It is from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16a. It says here, All scripture is God-breathed. Do you know what this verse means? This verse tells us that everything in the Bible is given to us directly from God. Isn't that amazing? Let's see how this works in our exploration today. And by the way, we will need the help from your ate or kuya or mommy or daddy. First, let's cut a slit on our straw, about one third from the tip. Next, let's put some food coloring on our glass of water. Ask an ate or kuya, mommy or daddy to hold our paper towel like this. Face the paper towel. Then let's get our glass of water and let's put our straw in it. Let's bend the part of the straw where we cut the slit. Now here comes the messy part of our exploration. So be sure that you're in a place or area that is okay to make a mess in. Now take a deep breath and then blow on the straw. Now, try tilting the straw in different angles while blowing. Our colored water splashed into our paper towel. Did you like our exploration today? Because I did! Let me share with you now what happened in our exploration. When you blew across the slit in the straw, it pulled air out of the bottom part of the straw, right? This produced a vacuum or a space that has absolutely nothing in it. To fill the vacuum, water from the glass is drawn up the straw and then blown onto the paper towel. How is this like God using people to write the Bible? We know that the words in the Bible are God's words even though they were written down by people just like you and me. Through the Holy Spirit, God worked within the hearts and minds of the Bible writers to help them write down His truth. 
we can trust that the things God tells us in the Bible are right. Like in our exploration, without blowing the straw, water will not reach our paper towel. Everything in the Bible is God-breathed. Just like what our Bible verse today says, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16a, All scripture is God-breathed. Second Timothy three verse sixteen. All scripture is God beat. Second Timothy three verse sixteen. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we praise and honor you, Jesus. Thank you so much for all the blessings we receive each day. Thank you for protecting all the families in our church and Davao City. Thank you for keeping us strong and courageous that we can fight this battle through your words. Your words are living and active. They are your breath, Lord, that gives life and hope to all of us. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for reciting our Bible verse today and for leading today's prayer and to Teacher Christine for our Arts and Crafts video. Thanks again for joining us today and we hope that you will join us again next week here at the Children's School of Character. Always remember that Jesus loves you! Bye! I'll see you next week!